The story you're about to hear is true. It's a story about two teenage boys, ages 14 and 16. They went to school, played sports, hung out with their friends, wanted to be liked, wanted to fit in, just like you. Their childhood was cut short. Hate and prejudice stepped into their lives without warning or reason. It destroyed their dreams of carefree summers, family holidays, and the love of friends. Can you imagine riding in a cattle car instead of a school bus? During World War II, teenagers just like you were packed into train cars like cattle. They were torn from their families and friends, transported to a place that could only be described as hell on earth. Their destination, Auschwitz. This film is not just a history lesson. You've all heard about the Holocaust, the extermination of six million Jewish people and five million non-Jews. Some claim the Holocaust never happened or that it was greatly exaggerated. They say that the millions of men, women, and children died as a normal result of war. What do you think? Could this really happen in our civilized society? My name is Mike Vogel, and I am just one voice. I'm here to bear witness to all of you. I can prove that the Holocaust occurred because I was there. I am a survivor of Auschwitz, a death camp located in Poland. I am one of the few left to tell the story about how prejudice and hate can grow to such extremes that six million Jews and five million non-Jews could be exterminated before any one voice could make a difference. When we first made this film about my life and the horrors of Auschwitz, we were hoping that society would have improved, that tolerance towards each other would be a natural way of life. We wanted to believe that prejudice and violence would only remain in history books to be read and remembered. Today's youth faces many challenges. Hate and prejudice still rear their ugly heads, but with a different face. It's not the Nazis you fear today. People in your own community are isolating others because of their race or religion. Do you avoid others that are different from you? Some students feel so isolated and unloved that they act out in the worst possible way. The years of being teased and tortured have taken a toll on many students. Unfortunately, some of these kids have resorted to murder to be noticed to be remembered. Do you think this could happen at your school? How many school shootings, racial hate crimes, senseless murders have to occur before people look deep inside themselves and correct the violence and discrimination of today? It's not the gang member down the street, the drug pusher downtown, or even the school bully that is causing all of these problems. How many of you make fun of someone because they're different? Because they don't have the right clothes, shoes, car, house, or even if they're a different race or religion? This is our son, Samuel. Sammy was born with a brain malformation known as holoprosencephaly, or HPE. Sam was born unique. He was born with something that he, he couldn't control. As his life progresses, you have to look at how he's going to be treated and, and how um, those around him are going to treat him. The Holocaust occurred because of one culture's view that they were a superior race. They believed that somehow they were better than others and only they should exist. Hitler preyed on fear, ignorance, and indifference to convince first his countrymen and then others to follow him. His goal 
to eliminate anyone who would infect his perfect race. What if you didn't fit into that perfect race? But they just, they didn't know what was going on in the camps. Many deaf joined the Nazi party. They didn't know the impact that Hitler was having, didn't know about the sterilizations, didn't know that he didn't want deaf babies to be born. Didn't know that when people were being sent to the camps that they were being killed. The Holocaust happened between 1939 and 1945. Seems like ancient history, right? I bet you think that it couldn't happen today, not where you live. Take a look around. Prejudice comes in many forms, from what happened in Germany to what's happening right now in your community, or maybe even in your classroom. What does prejudice really mean anyway? Prejudice is when you decide that they appear different from you. Take a look in the mirror. Do you fit in? You might think so, but what if someone else doesn't? The past generations have tried and failed to stop the hatred, prejudice, and senseless murders that continue to grow in our society. Now it's your turn to make a difference. It all comes down to respect, treating others the way you will want to be treated to stand up and have a voice, and maybe put hatred and prejudice in its place, in the past, where it belongs. One voice standing up for what's right. Two voices uniting for equality. Three voices can multiply to become a generation that stands for peace, love, and respect for life. It all starts with you. Inside this house, three people prepare for a journey to the land of the dead. Mike Vogel, his wife Agnes, and their friend David Mandel. Both men survived the Nazi death camp of Auschwitz. And now, they're going back after more than 40 years to Auschwitz back to where 1.6 million Jews were methodically tortured and murdered and burned to ashes in ovens. The two men looked deep into the dread dark side of the human heart. They tried to come to grips with the unthinkable. A time when Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party came to power in Germany. A time when Germany was locked in a deep economic depression. Hitler blamed the bad times on the Jews and other minorities. Only by exterminating them, he said, could Germany be purified, restored to its former glory. It was a time when the unthinkable, the mass murder of human beings, became public policy. If that happened in a modern age, can it happen again? What I've seen in Auschwitz, it's, it's almost indescribable. Unloading innocent people, innocent children, sometime holding a child in your arm and an SS officer will walk by and make you hold the child and shoot the child in your arm. For no reason whatsoever, we have to find out what made people so inhumane towards fellow man. If for no other reason, maybe we can prevent of anything of this kind of evil happening again. Mike Vogel has only a few tattered pictures to remind him of the family he was once a part of. Tragically, his pictures also serve as a constant reminder that humans are capable of terrible things. 
that the human personality contains a seed of cruelty and blindness. For all the promise of our mind and spirit, it seems we are also entirely capable of the most heinous of crimes against our fellow human beings. The Holocaust, the systematic slaughter of an entire people. But the Nazis did not invent genocide, murder on a massive scale. It's a phenomena which arises from the ashes of history again and again with awful regularity. To the surprise of many and the shame of us all, even here in America, there have been times and places where the venoms of prejudice and hatred have produced acts of unspeakable cruelty. Yet, it's just possible if we can understand why these poisonous chapters in our history happen, we may be able to prevent them from ever happening. Mike Vogel, his family, and his friend David Mandel begin the awful passage back to a world most of us cannot even imagine. To an event in history some people say never did happen at all. I must go for a simple reason. So many denials that Auschwitz never happened. The concentration camps didn't exist. Holocaust is a fabrication. Professor Butts of Northwestern University, Arthur Butts, he wrote a book and published it in England. The name of the book is Hoax of the 20th Century. I am a survivor of Hoax of the 20th Century. Yet, uh, there are some people, uh, when I speak about my experiences, they tell me that it's been 45 years already. It's time to forget. How can a person like myself forget? I remember it very well. I remember when I got there 45 years ago, and I can see it in my mind, it's just like it happened yesterday. Who were these people cast into the ovens of Auschwitz? They were people like your neighbors, physicians, teachers, poets, farmers, workers, storekeepers, craftsmen, people flesh, dream, and fire. They were Mike Vogel. They were David Mandel. They were children, women, men, the old and the young. And they were Jews, gypsies, other minorities. They had different customs, worship, traditions than the majority of those around them. And being different, a minority. When things went wrong, they were blamed resented, ridiculed. They were the outsiders, the strangers. Prejudice turned to active discrimination. Laws were passed to exclude them from the privileges of society. Their property was taken away, then their freedom. People, good people, turned the other way. Mike Vogel, David Mandel, their entire families were taken to the death camps. People refused to believe it was happening, or they ignored the evidence of mass murder. And so it goes. Not always on the other side of the world, but sometimes right down the street. It starts with prejudice, the belief that we are better than someone else, and it leads to cruelty and blindness and murder. Such things happen not so much because of what bad people do, but because good people stand by and do nothing. Who were the people thrown into the ovens of Auschwitz? They were people like you and me, just people. And who's responsible for them being there? 
people like you and me. I'm at the site where 45 years ago I first came in through that gate, and I remember it like it was yesterday, where after four days and four nights of traveling from our area, we were finally arrived. The doors opened up. I remember the first thing, fresh air hit us. The second thing, we looked around, we realized that it wasn't the Hungarian prairie that they told us we would, they would be taking us. As we disembarked, there were prisoners in striped clothing. We didn't know who they were. And that's when they, when they start getting the people off, this is when they got us into, into the action. Our job was try to tell the people to leave their belongings behind, that it would follow them, and line up in the rows of five. They kept barking everybody down quickly, leave your things behind, and line up over there on the road, women and children to the right, able-bodied men to the left. And when that was completed, they would start marching the mothers and children and the old people towards the crematoria. My older brother and I and my dad went to the left. My mother, three younger brothers, and my sister went to the right. the last I saw them. This is block 19, Birkenau. As you can see the bunks, this is how we were housed. These little narrow spaces here. You were stepping over bodies practically. This brick wall here, this little small wall, this is where we used to sit and try to keep warm. At the end, on the back door, there was a huge metal drum, which was used for the bathroom. We were not allowed to go out of the barrack into the bathroom. Arbeit means work, wacht is make, fry is free. Mike and Agnes Vogel, along with their two daughters, and David Mandel, passed through the iron gates of Auschwitz as free people. Yet the past horrors of this place still take their stand in Mike's memory. My father got sick, or I would say a second week of November 1942. And they put him in the Krankenbau, in a sick, sick bay, sick bay without doctors. It was, uh, it was only a holding cell. And I was in block 16, and I would walk here every night after roll call to see him. We were not allowed to go in. I would call to this window right from here, and he would come to the window and he would talk to me. I remember the last time I talked to him. But then he knew there was only two of us left uh, alive. And that's when he said to me, try to survive and carry on the name. I came to see him the next evening, called for him. He didn't come out. Another person came and told me they took him this morning. They took him to the crematorium. I couldn't cry for him. Because in Auschwitz, if you cried, you died. Here, among the shadows and echoes of Auschwitz, the souls of the dead cry out to be remembered. It is a thunderous kind of silence. As time passes, 
we sometimes turn away from the shadows and the echoes of this place. It is too terrible to contemplate what happened here. One murder we can encompass with our mind and we can mourn. Millions of murders are beyond our capacity to understand and so we deny or we ignore or we forget. But if we deny or ignore or forget the lives and the deaths of these people, if we turn away from the shadows and the echoes, we will find one day we are in a room, naked, stripped of our freedom and our dignity, knowing we are human only because of the terror we feel. And we will hear the hollow hiss of gas. To forget the Holocaust is to guarantee it will happen again. To forget the victims is to become one. This is crematorium and gas chamber three. Two men, Mike Vogel, David Mandel, they came back to a place they have never really left, for their past is here among the ashes. They came and they said a prayer for the dead. It is quite possible they will never really leave this place, Auschwitz, for their future is also here. They have taken a sacred oath to make sure the reality of what happened in this place is not forgotten. And in this way, they are saying a prayer for the living. Every day, every year, every month, there are less and less survivors. Pretty soon, there will not be any survivors left. And this Auschwitz will only be a legend. To know the truth of Auschwitz is to touch the dark side of the human heart. To know the truth of Auschwitz is to know that nightmares can be real and that cruelty and injustice and inhumanity are forces which arise with regularity in the affairs of men and of women. To know the truth of Auschwitz is to know this. If we can be cruel to one person, we are capable of cruelty to many. If we discriminate against a few people, we are capable of discrimination against an entire people. If we are unjust or inhumane in our personal lives, we are but one step away from condoning injustice and inhumanity as public policy. And there is this. It is a very short road from prejudice to the gates of Auschwitz. It all comes down to respect treating others the way you would want to be treated. To stand up and have a voice, and maybe put hatred and prejudice in its place, in the past, where it belongs. It all starts with you.